worked with Goldberg. Yeah, yeah, I did. How did that come about? Well, I well, I was okay. I was talking about the shot right with me and Roddy. So, yeah. So I, we were about um, eight or nine years in, and I already had the place down to where I knew I was going to pay it off. And so uh, everybody, that's when they started doing the switch over to WCW, and everybody right. was getting these big contracts. Of course, I'm still in the business. I know everybody, and they're calling me, Lenny. You need to come get some of this gravy, boy. Uh, you know, you, these guys are handing out contracts. What are you doing sitting at your ass at the, at the damn transmission shop, you know? And so um, I decided, well, hell, maybe I'll see what they'll do. And I, and I went over. This threw me, man. I went there, you know, and I've been working. I told you how long, eight, 17 years, 60. I went over and they go, okay, you got to, uh, this is your tryout match. I'm going to try out. <laughs> I started laughing. I said, hey, First of all, I was in the business before all you guys were telling me I got to try out. <laughs> so that's okay. That's what we do nowadays. I go, okay. And thank God they gave me uh, 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 Eddie Guerrero. I said, brother, they, that's another one I should have mentioned earlier. I couldn't have got a better guy to work with. I mean, he's like, and so I went, this is my tryout match, Eddie Guerrero. I said, thank you. And so we had a hell of a match. So then Bischoff coming to me says, okay. We're going to sign you for two years, give you 150 a year. And I know you have the transmission shop. You only have to work like 10 days a month. I went, serious? I said, where's the paperwork? Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. Let's get it done. So I was all happy with it, you know, but it didn't, it didn't come through. It didn't happen. So I don't know what happened. I still don't know who said what or whatever. But after about a month and they're still – said they're getting things together. I finally went to Terry Taylor and I said, hey, brother, I got a family over there. I got a business. I said, somebody needs to get up shit or and just get something going. Or, you know, I can't just keep flying from one place to the next, you know, and all that. So he goes, and then after that, I got a notice that this is your last book. <laughs> and so, but before that, I went to TV and uh, they had me on an off TV match. To answer your question, I got way off. I'm sorry. It's an off TV match. And, um, uh, so I'm talking this. I don't know who this guy was it a guy. Maybe you know he's a he's a black fellow, but he was huge. I ain't never seen a guy this big. He was, I mean, like six seven, but he was ripped. And I don't know where he, he's like from Nigeria or something. I don't know who he was. I haven't seen him again. So I'm, they say I'm working with him. I said, oh shit. So I set him down. I'm mean, he's a really nice guy. And I said, well, I need to, <laughs> let's talk this over. This guy's gonna kill me out here accidentally, right? All of a sudden, Jimmy Hart comes up and taps me on the shoulder and goes, hey, they need to talk to you down here. I said, who does? Kevin Sullivan. I said, oh, okay. I knew what was coming. And that's when Goldberg was on that streak where he yeah. was beating so many people. I went, oh, you got to be kidding. I said, okay, here we go. So I went down there and Goldberg sitting in a chair. And they listened. We went, I said, okay. And so that's how that happened, you know. And so I went out there. It was like a squash job. I jumped. He bam, bam, bam. Here we go, Jack Hammer. <laughs> or give the spear of the jackhammer and away we go, you know. Would so, you imagine back then that he'd still be main eventing uh, pay-per-views all this time later? No, I did. I thought he was, well, after he quit there, got whatever happened when he took off from WWE, I figured that was the end of it. You know, when he started doing the, the movies and trying to do the other things. But now I didn't, I didn't think he'd be back. But I didn't think he needed the money to come back. But I don't know. I don't know. Apparently, it's three million a year for three matches a year plus bonuses. So. No, yeah, that's not too bad. <laughs> you know, boss, I was in Kansas City when I did that. I think it yeah. was Kansas City, and I am not exaggerating. They had like a what, an eighteen wheeler rig, and it's, they said, "Man, they had sold out of uh, t-shirts of his that night." And they wow. had like half of that pack with I said, "They sold all that shit." <laughs> I couldn't believe it. So you know. I don't know what he makes on merch, too. You know, unbelievable, right? Damn. It's also an issue that they don't have any new stars, so they have to use guys like him that were older, that were over yeah. in previous eras. Yeah, they did that with Piper and all Snook and all those guys forever, trying to build up other guys, you know. But, yeah, they need to make – definitely get some – you know, one thing One thing that, I mean, it's uh, – um, I don't know what your opinion, what you think about this, but uh, I I think 
I just wonder how this would work now. I know when we used to, when I, when I was working on top in the business, when I was on top, that we got paid by the, how many people, how many tickets were sold. Now right. they get paid off the TV revenue. How much money do you think they'd make if they had to go back to that with some of the talent they have now? <laughs> okay. they, we lost money on house shows before COVID the last couple of quarters. So That's what I'm saying, you know, so. They don't I have don't to know. drive anymore. I mean, with the guys used to actually draw money. I'd, I'd average three grand a week in the eighties. Yeah. We would actually draw that much money. Well, we had to draw a lot of money to make that. And that was a good territory. Mid South was on fire, but it took a lot of good workers and a lot of guys. And, you know, I don't know how that would work today. You know, how that, if they could do that or not, I, know, I don't know. Do you think they'd be breaking kayfabe as much if they had to get paid off the house? Hell no, they'd be protecting the business. <laughs> or they starve to death. <laughs> yeah, because they want that to me the most that they possibly can, you know, because that's why, you know, people say, brother, hey, I, I've had people, I've had guys, I've had guns pulled on me two different times. I've been, people trying to cut me. I mean, man, they, hey, they believed it. And you had to be a good enough worker to make them believe it. But I'm just saying, they, you know, I wish there was 10 million more like that because I'd have made a lot more money, you know. <laughs> but that, that's the way it was back then. But everything changes, I know, I understand. I just wonder if they'd be able to feed their family on what they drew. Then they'd be really concerned about getting over. You know, like you got to get over instead of like, you know, different things they do on there now. But I, I don't know because they make money from a lot of different places now. Like, hell, we didn't even get merchandise money. When I was a heel, the, ba the baby faces did. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Support us on Patreon.com for $1.99 a month to watch our full shoot interviews ad-free and help our channel grow. Follow us on Twitter at the Hannibal TV for instant updates.